The natural frequency of a shear frame with a fixed base refers to the inherent oscillation rate at which the structure vibrates when subjected to external forces. This parameter is crucial for understanding the dynamic behavior of the frame. It is influenced by the frame's geometry, material properties, and the rigidity of its foundation. The natural frequency indicates how quickly the frame returns to its original position after a disturbance. Today, you will learn how to find out natural frequency of a shear frame with a fixed base using abacus and analytical methods. Hey friends, if you're new here, I am Dr. Javed Qureshi, a senior lecturer at a London university. On this channel, we explore technical and human skills to help us lead more productive, happy and examine life. In this lecture, I will talk about natural frequency of shear frame and I will mainly focus on three translational modes, translation in X, Y and Z direction. This is the example which I will solve here. It is assumed that mass is rigid at the top in beams and height of the frame is 3 meters, length is 6 meters. Beam is considered to be very rigid and this is the column section and E is given for the section, density is given, its concrete material, Poisson's ratio is given and section is 0.5 by 0.4 meter. Load applied is 250 kilonewton. That load needs to be converted into mass. We are required to find out frequencies in X, Y and Z direction. Let us find out natural frequency of a shear frame with a fixed base using analytical method. So we have to find the time period in seconds, frequency in hertz, angular frequency in radians per second in x, y and z directions. Assume that the mass of the column is neglected and the beam and ground are fully fixed. Full fixity is applied to the columns. Oh. First, we have to prepare the dynamic model for this structure so that we can apply appropriate stiffness. For this frame, translational degrees of freedom will be very important. First three modes will be in X, Y and Z direction. For mode 1, the frame is translating in Z direction. And if you view it in Y, Z plane, you will be able to see that I can model this as a vertical cantilever beam with a mass at the top and the mass is moving in Z direction. So if you view it from here, you will be able to see two columns which are oscillating in Z direction. In that way, I will be using the formula for a vertical cantilever. This is the formula for vertical cantilever. When it's fixed on one side and the load is applied at the tip, we have 3 EI over yes. LQ. In mode 2, the frame is translating in X direction. Stiffness is going to be defined by 12 EI over H cube. But because we have two columns which are taking part in this, we multiply it with 2. And the stiffness is obtained from this book, Structural Dynamics by Tedesco. When we have a shear frame with fixed base, the equivalent spring constant or stiffness is 12 EI over LQ. Okay. For mode 3, the mass is translating in Y direction. It is going through some axial deformation. When it's going through axial deformation, it is equivalent to a bar being stressed or compressed. The stiffness is EA over H. And there are two bars which are taking part. There are two columns, so that's why we have two over here. For actually loaded bar, the stiffness is AE over L. Here, first I need to find out mass. W is equal to mg, where mass is equal to weight over gravity. Weight given is 250 kilonewton divided by gravity is 9.81 meter per second square. This is giving me 25,484.2 kilograms. Now we have to work out second moment of area in two directions. One is Ix and second is Iz. So 0.5 into 0.4 cube over 12 and I multiply E, I'm getting 80 into 10 raised 6. Iz then we will have B as 0.4 and D is going to be 0.5. In that way, we work out IZ as this value and we multiply E to get this value. Area is 0.5 times 0.4. We get 6 into 10 raised 9. First, we need to work out KZ, which is a stiffness in Z direction. This means that load is being applied in Z direction. So here, if I show you load is being applied in Z 
direction, B is going to be 0.5 and D is going to be 0.4. It means that I will use Ix in this case. So Ix is when B is equal to 0.5 and D is equal to 0.4. When I use this formula, I get 17.78 into 10 raised to 6. Angular frequency is under root K over M. If I put values, I get 26.4. Fz is equal to 1 over 2 pi into Wz and I'm getting 4.2 hertz. Time is 1 over f and I'm getting 0.23. In the same way, I will find out kx. Now, kx is stiffness in the x directions. Now, here, i that you're going to use will be iz. And when the frame is moving in x direction, then you can see b is going to be 0.4 and d is going to be 0.5. And this is the case when we have iz. iz, we have b is equal to 0.4 and d 0.5. When you're working out kx, second moment of area will be iz. And you saw the evidence. How did I use use this. If you put all these values, you get this value in Newton per meter for kx. Wx is equal to k over m. Put value of k and m we worked out earlier, 66.03 radians per second. fx is equal to 1 over 2 pi omega x. And from here, we get 10.53 hertz. And tx is simply inverse of frequency, which is 0 0.095. Ky involves third mode. In this case, the column is going up and down and column is being axially loaded. So when we have axially loaded column, then we will be using Ea over L rather than second moment of area. So here I'll be using Ky is equal to Ea over H. In that way, I get value of Ky and omega Y is equal to under root K over M and I'm getting 396.2 radians per second, 1 over 2 pi into omega Y and I'm getting 63 hertz and time period is simply inverse of frequency. Let us now find out natural frequency of a shear frame with a fixed base using abacus. As usual, I'm going to use the same units SI as I've been using in other lectures. Make sure you're consistent with units. I'm going to use these nine steps to model this problem, starting from part, property, assembly, step, interaction, load, mesh, job, and visualization module. I will start with abacus standard. First step is part where we will create geometry. Double click on part and I would like 3D deformable and wire. The maximum dimension is going to be 10. Click continue. And then I'm going to create a frame. Click here, click here and click here. And I'm going to assign equal constraint to these two columns. Click on this, click equal length and press shift key and click on this one and click on this column. These two columns have been assigned equal length. Then I will dimension this column as three and I'm going to dimension the beam as six. The Second step is property module. The next step is property. Here first I will define material. Go to material elastic and here you will define second moment of area. 30E9, 0 0.33, and I will define density as well, 2400, and I will reduce the density by minus 0 0.4 because I don't want the solution to consider density of the elements. And in that way, I'll be able to model the lump mass approach. Click OK. At this moment, I will take this opportunity to define the beam section orientations. So click on section, beam section orientation, and I'm going to see its 3D view and I will choose all these elements. Module. When the we define beam section orientation, we have to be very careful in the way we define the section. Here I'm concerned with defining a column section and you can see global X direction is aligned with local two direction and global Z direction is aligned with local one direction. So make sure when you are defining a section, local axis two is your X axis and local axis one is your Z axis. And click oh. OK to accept. Here you can see that local axis two is aligned with X, local axis one is aligned with Z. X dimension was 0.5 and Z dimension was 0.4. Make sure these two are aligned. Click OK. And then I will go to sections and here I will define a beam section. Click OK. Here Poisson's ratio is 0 0.33 and I will define a profile, a rectangular profile. 
click OK. And here, two dimension was aligned with X. That's why I will define B as 0 0.5. Z dimension was aligned with 1. So that's why I will define it as 0 0.4. This is really very important when you're defining the sections. Otherwise, you will mess up the sections. Click OK and then continue. Now I have to assign this section to all the parts. Click OK, section assignment, choose entire frame and assign the section. Third what? step is assembly module. Once the section is assigned, then I will assemble the parts. Go to assembly, click on here and assemble the parts. Fourth step is step module. The next is a step. Here I will define a step which is linear perturbation and frequency. Click OK and I would like first six mode shapes and I'm using length source method. Fifth is interaction module. Next is interaction. Here I will define a point mass and I will tie up that point mass with top of the beam. So first let's define a reference point. So reference point will be the center of the beam. Cancel the procedure reference point has been defined. Next, I will tie up this reference point with the beam. So go to constraints and click on rigid body, click continue and tie nodes here, define the region. I want to define this beam and I want to tie this beam to the reference point which is at the center that will be my lamp mass adjust the point to the center of the mass this reference point has now been tied with the beam now i can assign point mass to this reference point so for assigning point mass go to assembly and then engineering features and click on inertia here assign this point mass click that reference point and the point mass was two five four eight 4.2. Once the mass has been assigned, click OK. Sixth is load module. Okay. The next step is load where I will define the boundary conditions. I just have fixed boundary conditions. So I will say fix displacement rotation. Click OK. Press shift key and click on these two points and restrain all the degrees of freedom. Seventh is mesh module. Okay. After that, I will mesh the part. First, I will choose the element. So click on element and select the frame, click OK. I want to mesh the model with quadratic beam elements, click OK, and then seed the part. So global seed size, I'm going to seed it with 0.2. And the next thing is to mesh the part. Now part has been meshed. Eighth is job module. And then I will define a job, create a job. I will say frac as frame. A click OK job has been defined. This is opportunity for me to define the working directory and save the model. So I will set up the working directory and click OK. Then I will save the model. And simply I will submit the job and monitor. Ninth is visualization module, a clean solution. Then I would like to have a look at the data file because this will give me very useful information. The first thing I want to look for is the mass. The mass of the structure should be equal to the total mass 25484. And then here the first frequency is 4.17, the second is 10.04, third is 63. Let's view these modes. So click on visualization results. Here the first thing I want to do is that I don't want to see this title and I don't want to see this X, Y, Z. So click on annotation options. So show compass. I don't want to see show title. I don't want to see. You click OK. And I don't want to see legend as well because the displacements are irrelevant here. I'm interested in frequencies. So, so don't show legend. I want to extrude the model so that I can see the thicknesses of the elements. Click on ODB display options. And here render profiles and then I want to render profiles by 0.75 and this will give me a bit of realistic view of what is happening. And then I will click on this and here I will click on allow multiple plots and I would like to see the deflected and undeflected shape. For the first mode which is translation mode in Z direction 
and then i would like to see its movie as well so that i will know that it is displacing in this direction click ok and here you can see that first mode is translation in z direction and frequency from abacus is 4.17 that is very close to the manual calculations where we get 4.2 and then i will stop here and i will go to next frequency next mode is translational mode as well so now it is behaving like a shear frame and it is moving in x direction and frequency is 10.048 that is very close to the manual calculation which is 10.5 hertz then i will move to the next mode this is the mode which takes care of axial deformation in axial deformation the frequency is 63.05 that is very close to the manual calculation as well. The manual calculation we get is 63. This is the comparison for mode 1 when the frame is translating in z direction. The results from Abacus indicate that angular frequency is 26.22, the frequency is 4.17 hertz, and time period is 0.24. The angular frequency from analytical method is 26.4 and natural frequency is 4.2 these two results match closely with abacus Cube. in Four. mode 2 the mass is translating in x direction the angular frequency from abacus is 63 natural frequency is 10.03 cycles per second and from analytical method we have 66 as angular frequency and the frequency is 10.5 again it's a close match between analytical method and abacus L here mode. are the results for mode 3 when the frame is translating in y directions angular frequency is very high 396 the natural frequency is 63 from abacus and from analytical method again there is a close match 396.2 the frequency is 63 you can have a look at all lecture slides and example pdf files in this link tinyurl.com slash jqureshi abacus feel free to have a look at it and download all files